Hello YouTube, welcome to another Gimp Know How tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own uh, forum signature. In this case, using a render from the game Assassin's Creed 2. Good game, actually. It's actually very educational. If you want to learn about the inside of the human body, play Assassin's Creed 2. And you can even tell that blood is indeed denser than air, and it rains down. Uh, yeah, so, so it's a very educational game, in fact. Um... But yes, anyway, we're going to make a signature, and here's the first time I did the signature. I like it better than when I tried to recreate it. Uh, this one looks a little too colorful, not quite vintage enough, because I was kind of going for that vintage photograph effect. Uh, and I did that by getting to a French gradient map, setting it on normal, and then like toning it down. But we can learn about that later. Uh, so we're going to actually start with the tutorial right about now. So what I did is I opened up a 399 by 149 uh, signature bar in GIMP. And if you're wondering the story between 399 and 149, you probably don't want to hear, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And that is because on GIMP Talk, a forum I was on, uh, their limit was 400 by 150. So that was my way of being a rebel. Um, so we're going to go File, uh, Open as Layers, and the very first thing we need to open is the Assassin's Creed Render stock that we got from Planet Renders. The link will be in the description. Uh, now I'm going to go right here as a starting point because, as you can see, it has uh, lots of reds, uh, nice contrast with the white, and so even some of the brown and the machinery on his blade. So uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to go Filters, and I believe it is Noise, and then Pick. And... Tone all the settings up to 100 and check randomize and then click OK. Next, we need to begin darkening up the background. And the way we're going to do this is because we don't want that much white because we want there to kind of be a light source. We're going to duplicate this layer and then take the move tool and move the cape right over here so we get this nice uh, dark reddish uh, color. Except we want to preserve the flow as well. So we're going to take this tool and flip that picked horizontally and then we're going to move it right here. So this way we have two capes and a kind of center where we'll place the render. Um, I, I think this will work out pretty good. Now we're going to go file, open as layers, and open up the render again. Get used to doing this. Now this render is too big for our purposes at the moment at least. So we're going to scale this down about here. Now uh, we want to create a centerpiece for, um, we want to create a center block that's kind of shiny uh, for the main rendered send-in. So we're going to set this layer mode on Dodge. Except we're going to go Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur to prevent it from getting this yellowy Dodge effect that happens if you use the filter too strongly. And that is the effect of a low quality signature. Now erase the parts you don't like, and I don't like this yellowish red apart around the cape. And, alright, uh, we're going to merge these layers down, then duplicate them, then we're going to go Filters, Distorts, Eye Warp. And on the Eye Warp, we're going to go Swirl, CCW, and adjust these to your liking. Basically, the bigger the, f the deform radius, the more it will deform, and the more the deform amount, well, do you really need me to explain this? Um, I refuse to believe that people could be that not intelligent. Um, so because I want to get this kind of splayed effect that ended up right here, I'm going to go about this. And it can it can really be done anyway. You do not have to do it my way because there, there's so much variation. Next, we need to paste the actual render we're going to be uh, using in on top of this already made background. So we're going to go File, Open as Layers, and open up your Assassin's Creed 2 picture. I forget his name. Ezio? Ezio? Something like that. I forget how to pronounce it. Uh, that is... So I'm going to make this window bigger, and what this will allow me to do is it I can scale it, and then I can see the scaled image, and I can easily grab it. Uh, yeah. Alright, uh, so he's kind of blurry from the scaling, because scaling is not quality friendly. So we're going to go Filters, Enhance, Sharpen. 
and I'm going to sharpen them by about 50, as you can tell, I've done this before. Alright, so uh, now I want to intensify the render shadows, so I'm going to duplicate this layer and set this layer mode on the soft light, and this really does quite intensify his shadows. I'm going to tone it down to around 70% of opacity. Now I'm going to duplicate this soft light layer, and I don't want it to be that intense, but what I'm going to do is move it out to either side of the image, most notably this white side, to add more texture to the overall image and erase anything that is on your main render sand. So now he's fairly well blended and I added this collar part as soon as my screen recorder crashed and basically what I did is I just opened up bigger portions of the render, uh, cut out most of the other parts except this collar and set the layer mode on overlay. Very simple to do. This is more of a concept tutorial anyway since there's really no way you could be following me this fast. Um, so, uh, now we're going to commence with the main render blending itself. So we're going to take the main render, which you always know is the normal render layer, we're going to duplicate this, and now we're going to go Filter, Distorts, Eye Warp. And on this Eye Warp, I don't think I want quite that much deform amount, and not near that much deform radius. And I'm just going to start twirling the arms about like this. And I'm going to maybe move them out just to get a kind of uh, flare effect, I guess you could say and then swirl them the other way just to get a kind of nice looking effect. Alright, now this looks horrible. Uh, and I always say this in like all of my tutorials, and this looks absolutely horrible, but we're going to fix it, and we are. Uh, that was a surprise. So erase everything you do not like about this render blending, and uh, we are going to uh, yeah, about like that, and I think that kind of helps blend the render a little bit more. So all that I've done during the break is I just slightly erased parts of the smoke because I didn't think it looked that good. Um, but yeah, now we're going to open up the greatest fractal pack known to Gimpkind, and that is Green Tunics Fractal Pack. So we're going to go File, Open as Layers, and I believe I used this in the uh, incredible photo manipulation tutorial. So the link is in the sidebar. And uh, I'm going to open up Fractal 3.8 on Green and Green Tuning uh, Fractal Pack 3. Uh, so now I'm going to set the layer mode on Addition, so none of the black really counts, if you will. And now I'm going to right-click on this layer and add an alpha channel. Now what I want to do is I want to have the, kind of this crisscross effect, and I want these two lines to be uh, on either side of them. So I'm going to erase this stuff because I don't really want it that uh, badly. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to take the flip tool and flip it horizontally. Now, all all it's a matter of is finding the other place, which I believe is right about here. Right about here. And this gives him a nice uh, symmetrical uh, flip effect. So now let's go ahead and open up another fractal. We're going to go File open as layers, and the next fractal I'm going to open is this one, 3-6. I'm going to set this to addition, and now we're starting to get this blue effect, and fractals, they make everything better, I mean, they really do. I, I would not be able to live without fractals. Uh, so we're going to right click, add an alpha channel to this, and erase this dot, because that's not where we meant the light source to be. Alright, I'm going to add one more fractal yet. Go File, Open as Layers. And uh, I'm going to open up this one, a 3, 9. And set it on Addition as well. We're getting quite a bright signature going here. Uh, no, we're, we're not quite worried about the brightness of it because we're going to be erasing this all. But uh, So take the Eraser tool and erase around. Whoops, forgot to add an Alpha Channel. Right click, add an Alpha Channel, then take the Eraser tool. Erase around all the parts you don't want. That happens to be almost everything. Not that much. Whoops. That happens to be a lot of it. I just wanted this one little speck of brightness right about here. Alright, so now uh, we're going to equalize it and start creating the flow of the signature. So I'm going to take the gradient tool and select the gradient FG to transparent with black as my FG, and I'm going to stroke a gradient from here down uh, to try to darken up the corners a little bit, and try to stroke it in, uh, make it congruent with the arms, so uh, we should then duplicate that, and then go filters, blur, 
Gaussian blur. And Gaussian blur by a lot. Alright, so, um, yeah, we have, a, we have a pretty good looking signature so far. Uh, and although the flow on, uh, I mean, the darkness on this side is not equivalent to the darkness on the other side. So now let's blur that. All right, and it's a little bl uh, bright yet. Uh, for my taste, we're gonna go colors, hue, saturation on the very bottom layer, and tone the saturation a little bit down just to get a little more of that purpley stuff in. Now go layer new from visible, and yeah. All right, now we're doing very good on this tutorial so far, and um, <clears throat> uh, we're going to give it a vintage effect and kind of equalize the coloring a little bit because. Uh, it's very, very bright right now. Uh, so what we're going to do is take the gradient and we're going to select the gradient French flag smooth. If I can find it. There it is. And now we're going to go colors, map, gradient, map. And set it on normal and then just gradually tone the opacity down until you get a rather vintage uh, looking signature. And that's it. You got the uh, colors pretty good. Uh, has all right uh, flow. Not one of the best signatures I've ever made, but probably one of the shortest uh, taking I've ever made. And uh, I would show you how to make text, but we are we are disgustingly over time right now. Uh, so instead of making text, we're just going to go file, open as layers, and open up the companion cube, because the companion cube makes everything better, and everyone will love this signature if I put the companion cube in it. If any of you get the companion cube reference, just go ahead and post a comment down there, and the first one to post it gets a metaphorical cookie. Uh, so we're going to click overlay and see if anyone can spot the companion cube. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for watching this GIMP know-how signature tutorial. It was oh, pretty pretty god-awful fast, but uh, hopefully you got something out of it. I mean, this was fast even for me. Um, but yeah, uh, this is GIMP know-how. Thanks for watching.